It's important to be prepared for the unexpected, but sometimes preparations can actually worsen your situation in the wild rather than improve it. Survival myths in particular can be exceedingly dangerous. Not only do they not work, but they can put you even more into harm's way. These are 10 survival myths that will get you killed. One of the most prolific survival myths is the idea that moss only grows on the north side of trees. The myth says that if you're lost, just find a mossy tree to reorient yourself. Moss doesn't care what direction it grows in. What it does like is moisture. In the northern hemisphere, the north side of objects is more often in shade, encouraging moisture to accumulate. But there's a variety of other environmental factors which can keep a surface damp as well, meaning you absolutely cannot assume the mossy side of a tree points towards the north. Another long existing myth is that if confronted by a bear, you should play dead. In fact, in most cases, you should be actively moving. Bears generally don't want to mess with humans. They don't see you as a meal. What they can see you as, though, is a threat to themselves, their cubs, or their food. And that's when they're most likely to attack. Playing dead leaves you in the territory the bear wants to protect, so it may feel threatened. If you come across a bear, the first thing you should try to do is retreat. Do not make sudden movements and do not run as you calmly leave the area. Speaking or singing is also recommended as it tells the bear where you are, lessening the chances of the bear becoming startled. If a bear comes after you, some experts recommend that you become aggressive, make yourself look big, stomp your feet and yell. Of course, there's never one surefire way to deal with bears, but playing dead is almost never recommended. Many decades ago, doorways were one of the most stable places in a building. As such, people sought shelter in them during earthquakes. However, modern construction techniques have significantly strengthened structures overall. Doorway strengths have not proportionally improved. In fact, swinging doors can cause you considerable injury so doorways should be avoided during earthquakes as they do nothing to improve your chances of survival. If you're lost somewhere and getting hungry, local plant life can be awfully tempting. However, unless you're an expert in wilderness survival, you have no way of knowing what those plants might do to a human being. Some people think they're safe if they only eat plants other animals are eating. And that is also a dangerous myth. Holly berries are poisonous to us, but are regularly eaten by a variety of birds. At the same time, the deadly nightshade berry isn't deadly at all to a variety of livestock, but is deadly to humans. Moreover, most plants don't offer a lot of calories, which is what a starving body wants. You could be spending more energy looking for plants than what you actually get out of them. While hunger is uncomfortable and eventually exhausting, an adult human can go for weeks without food. Finding it should not be your first goal. Rather, you should probably be finding shelter and fresh water. Survival shows, for whatever reason, have depicted lean-to shelters as adequate protection against the elements. In truth, each climate poses its own difficulties. Generally speaking, however, an emergency shelter should have walls enclosing a space to protect you from wind and conserve your heat. It's also highly important to insulate yourself against the cold ground using natural debris and other available materials. Cacti survive harsh desert conditions by storing water. Logically, we should be able to harvest that water in an emergency, right? After all, cowboys did it all the time in Western movies. Actually, it's not right at all, and movies are terrible places to take survival information from. The biological processes of most cacti leave whatever water they contain toxic. You're better off without it, even if you're dehydrating. A better tactic is to conserve as much moisture as possible by not exerting yourself and keeping in the shade. No one likes the idea of drinking urine, but conserving fluids is vital, so should you consider it in desperate circumstances? Urination is how we expel toxins from the body. When we dehydrate, our urine becomes darker as those toxins build up. To drink those toxins forces your already taxed body to process them a second time. As such, Drinking urine only exacerbates the problems of dehydration, so despite the many shows that perpetuate this myth, it's best avoided. Finding a safe source of water can be one of the biggest issues in wilderness survival. Contamination is a major concern, but snow comes directly from cloud cover and doesn't have the potential for flowing through contaminated areas. Is that safe? Only if you melt it. 
If you're trapped in the snow, hypothermia is a real danger. Putting cold snow inside you drops your core temperature, encouraging hypothermia, and it will take a lot of snow to hydrate you. 10 quarts of snow produces a single quart of water. If you have a fire in a container, it is recommended that you melt the snow first and then drink it. Yet another myth concerning both hydration and hypothermia is that alcohol helps warm the body. Nothing warms the body except heat, and there's no heat in alcohol. What alcohol does is expand blood vessels, letting more warm blood flow to your skin. That creates the sensation of warmth. However, now that warmth is on the surface of your body where it will quickly radiate away. The net result will be a loss in heat, not a gain. Decades of movie and TV shows have depicted people making fire by rubbing two sticks together, giving you the impression that the task is no big deal. It is, in fact, a huge deal. People who can light a fire in this manner have practiced a lot. They have learned and practiced specific techniques. They know what kind of wood to use. Planning on just being able to make a fire is almost always a losing strategy. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out our other lists. And thanks for watching. And thanks for learning.